Now there's so many different brushes out there on the market, there really is. All different qualities, all different shapes, all different sizes, different thicknesses, different hairs on the end. Is it hog hair? Is it um, sable? Is it acrylic? Is it synthetic? There's so many different variations. So it's a bit of a minefield when you start looking around, trying to find the right brushes to use. Where do you start? There's so much, I know, I know. So what I tend to do is stick with my favorite brushes. Now, these are ones I've tried and tested for many years and uh, I do like them, you know, I'm sure there might be better brushes on the market, but it's when you get kind of used to something. So this particular one is a Winsor Newton Cotsman Series 111. It's a double zero. And this is um, a synthetic bristle. So it's nice and soft, but yet it does not too much bounce to it which basically gives me a lot of control when I'm working on a painting. So it's not kind of bouncing all over the place. So that's my main one. I'll just put that down to one side. Another one I use, which is Sable. Okay, this is by Rosemary & Co. And that one is a Series 93, and that's a size five. But you can see that the tip is very, very pointed. They stay pointed for a reasonable length of time, but it depends, like me, when you're working on wildlife, doing thousands of brush strokes for hairs etc they soon wear away especially my little detail brush I'd go through two or three of these probably every half a dozen paintings or so um, so that gives us some ideas with a sable one there's more bounce to the sable but also it gives you that facility again some lovely kind of washes on the paper as well in certain areas because it does hold a lot of water within the bristles so it's well designed for that another one which I occasionally use is what's called a coma brush now the comb brush, when you wet this, you can just see the bristles all split on the end on purpose. And that'll give you four different lines in one go. I do have my own method, which I use, and I call that the replicator, which is this one here. Look, I know it looks rough, <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, it really does work. It's just a, an old brush I've crimped together with a pair of pliers. And I've literally gone to throw it in the bin, so therefore I made sure I make use of it. And that gives some very fine, tight lines. If you're going to work on lots of feathers or lots of hairs on a dog or a cat, that's what I tend to use for the first one or two layers. Other than that, what I tend to use as well is a very old acrylic mixing brush, which is this one. And that is, as I stated, it's for mixing your paints. So when you've got your paints in your palette like this, use this to mix. If you don't use that one, use your normal brushes, you soon wear away your decent brushes and then you have to buy some more. Okay, so use a very old brush to mix all your paints with. And one last thing is this old thing here. Now, <laughs> this particular one, is a size 18 Pro Art brush, which I've had for donkey's years. As you can see, not even a tip on it anymore. Completely worn away. But I use that for applying some of the wash techniques on the background. I do have one other brush, which I never forgot about. And that is my mop brush. Now I use this from working on the background. I lay the water on with this first of all, two or three times. And then I come in with my size 18 old fashioned, probably ready for the bin brush, and then apply the color with that. Okay, so that gives some ideas of the kind of brushes which I use for my paintings. So if you've got any questions or comments, please post them down below. I would love to hear from you. But remember to keep those brushes wet and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.